Hi, the Engagement Excellence Summit. Wow. Second session with Bruce Daisley, uh, former VP of EMEA at Twitter. Uh, now seems to be, you know, a, a, he's a great speaker. He's one of my tens for the show. And uh, it's sort of fascinating, you know, with these things, people don't tend to say like, oh, this is what I'm going to accomplish. But what I took away was he outlined first different ways that organisations stifle their employees in the workplace, how they sort of hamper them and, uh, you know, close down their creativity, their, their power. Uh, and then simple ways to lift that, to reinvigorate them, to free themselves so they can bring their true self to the uh, workplace and really contribute. So different ways were stifling people in the workplace. Well, he introduced me uh, to our toxic best friend, Cortisol. And we all know stress can be uh, really powerful. Uh, in the short term because you know it's a it's a superpower our body sort of you know it perks up it's readies itself for the challenge but long-term stress uh yeah is completely the opposite and he was providing it as kind of the science behind it it's useful to know that we are not just talking about feelings that there is a physical biological component here there is a science about what we are doing to our own bodies to our brains when we um, set up and normalize certain environments. And the thing is, one of the things that cortisol will do is it stifles creativity. So if you are stressed, if you are in a long-term situation where you are working incredibly hard, incredibly long hours, you will get less creative with time. Your people will get less creative with time. So you are harming the creativity and the problem-solving abilities of your organization. Interesting thought is on that subject of creativity, think about uh, power. Power is disinhibiting. So imagine you go into a meeting or into your boss's office and they stick their feet up on the desk. They can do that. They're the boss. They're in charge. You know, yeah, OK. Now imagine would you walk into their office, sit down and pop your feet up on their desk? No. No, not really. I'm sure there are some people there just going, no, that would be, ta what, ah, why would you? That, oh, how disrespectful. And yet, if you think about it, power is disinhibiting. You feel free, you feel open, you can relax. So what's the opposite of that? If you go into the office and you are inhibited, if you are holding back, if you are being respectful and deferring to other people, you know, fine, it's got its place. But the thing is, you are stifling your creativity. You're holding it back. You're not bringing your true self out. So, and that led to uh, an interesting sort of thing like um, ego depletion. So, as a basic concept, it's something I've heard before. We are capable of only making a certain amount of decisions in the day, um, that our brain power is a finite limited resource. It's just, we, we can operate, but once we hit our point, we stop making clear conscious decisions. We start to get a little bit random. And I've heard that before, like CEOs that always wear the same clothes, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, in fact, one of the CEOs, uh, an entrepreneur, co-founder um, co of a business I worked with, always wore the same sort of tan trousers and white shirt. Um, but it reduces decision making because you wake up in the morning. There's no what am I going to wear? You reach in, you grab out your trousers and your shirt, the same ones you always wear. And then you go. You've not engaged your brain. You've saved a little bit of power. And so, again, we stifle creativity. If we are working long hours, if we are constantly on the go, we're wearing that mental willpower down. And once we hit the brakes, once we're working late, or you know, once we're working, you know, getting in early and doing all these things, if we're skipping lunch, we're getting close to our maximum. We're looking at exceeding our maximum. And again, productivity can drop. And the final sort of piece in terms of stifling the workplace, connecting back into all this, all of this was in connected, fascinating um, presentation. 
Uh, a quote from a um, chap called Gregory Burns saying uh, it was a study with rats and but it was looking at how we have different senses. We have different sort of modes for engaging with and understanding the world. And our exploratory sense is kind of our curious one. It's the one where we're looking around, we're exploring our surroundings. We want to understand them and see what's going on. But we have our fear sense as well. And if we think we're in danger, if we think, um, you know, something stressful is going on, the fear sense engages. And when the fear sense engages, the exploratory sense stops. Because it's a risk. The fear sense, I need to stay inside my bubble now. I need to close down. And this fascinating study looking at rats, looking at um, putting them in cages, having them explore their surroundings, what's going on, how mental sort of exploratory actions were they doing. And then take a single cat hair, pop it in the cage, see what happens. And yeah, suddenly smell a predator. Stopped. Fear sense kicks in, all the exploratory actions stop. And importantly, even when they took the cat hair out, cleaned the cage, popped the carrots back in, the exploratory sense did not just kick back in. They had been inhibited, their actions had been sort of closed down, and it took several days for the exploratory sense to return, and even then, they were exploring about half the rate they were before. So, by creating a stressful environment or an environment of fear or inhibiting environment, we are shutting down the creativity, the exploratory senses of our employees. But what can we do about that? So Bruce offered five ways to free ourselves in the workplace. And um, yeah, uh, you know, not the most complicated things. Um, he suggested think. So understand about when we get our ideas. Like, uh, you know, we kind of know, like, you don't really get ideas when you're sort of actively focusing on the problem. So often you hear, like, you know, take a break, go and think about something else, come back to it. And yes, a daydreaming kind of state is when we are at our most creative. That is when you make random associations about issues. So actually, if we want to encourage people, we need to find ways to encourage them uh, not to just, you know, daydream or like drift off, but but to find that openness, to find that space, to allow them a bit of room to think round a problem, to be creative and not to be just laser focused, task, 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 task. Team. Feeling connected to each other is a transformative experience. So we are more productive as a group when we are part of an overall sense of belonging and he threw in uh, an example with rowers so uh, taking rowers sticking them in the gym sticking them on rowing machines and you had two different sort of uh, groups going on so line them up all in a row so they're in competition with each other. They are sitting there and they're rowing as hard as they can. And yet, oh, you know who can do the most? They're competitive people. And so they go at it and they do their rowing. And then the other group, they put the machines in a row. Uh, so, you know, they're behind each other like they would be in a boat. And the only instruction they were given is that you need to row in time with each other. And actually, those two groups covered around the same distance. Being in competition didn't make them inherently more productive. So rowing together worked. But when they took a look at the physiological results, so what had happened to their bodies as a result of this, they found endorphin levels, so sort of the pleasure chemical, the, uh, the sort of uh, the sense of uh, belonging, that were twice as high in the group that were working together. Relax. Face-to-face -face interactions are more productive and more relaxing than other types of interaction. So, um, you know, just sending emails or, you know, the occasional quick phone call. Yeah, it, it doesn't stack up to a face-to-face -to -face conversation. You are more likely to, you know, engage fully. You've got all those different layers of communication. You've got all the physical layers going on as well. And you're more likely to have that sort of free roaming conversation and to share useful information and sort of, you know, to talk on random topics. 
So you build that sense of connectedness and you are more likely to share sort of, you know, just random bits of information that tie people together. Settling in, wasn't too sure where I was gonna go with this, but it's the concept of how you can get people to settle into the workplace so they are bringing their true selves to work. And by that, I mean the piece of you that is not inhibited. So we've talked about, you know, the stifle piece, the piece that's uh, afraid to make suggestions or sort of will just defer. It's like, no, how can we get people to settle in, feel relaxed, feel, yes, you're part of this group, welcome to us. Bring who you are. We want to know who you are. And we want to see that here so that we can get the very best of you in terms of uh, helping out and resolving our issues. And finally, belonging. So much of what humans do is in service of belongingness. We, we do it for each other or we do it because we think it will be good for the group. Um, you know, it's just like, yes, there are selfish actions, but there are a lot of selfless people or people that do things because they think it's the right thing to do for a group or even just to fit in with a group. It doesn't have to be altruistic. And actually that uh, as an indicator of mortality, loneliness is actually a bigger indicator of uh, mortality than obesity. Lonely people are more likely to die than obese people. Well, that's pretty shocking. And just think about what that means for just us as human beings. I mean, a lack of connection, uh, a feeling of isolation. Yeah, these are harmful things. So the opposite is a better thing. So how can we bring people together? Not all just doing, you know, like uh, team lunches or all those sorts of things, but even just encouraging those interactions, making us feel that we belong to each other, that we are part of a connected group. So Bruce in there, ways that we just stifle ourselves in the workplace and ways that we can free ourselves up to give our very best and to be the best at solving issues. Okay, thank you very much. On to the next session.